Well, this is the Bluetooth speaker I decided to build. Oh, and I'd like to thank Ben Sound for providing this royalty-free uh, audio track. Um, I made it using the Tiger Power Tour audio. Um, this system I actually saw at a thrift store for uh, two dollars. It's a bit beat up and. It had been outside for some time, judging by the dirt on it, but it was a pretty decent buy. Now, to build this, I wanted to set myself a goal of being able to build myself a Bluetooth audio system, uh, portable and rechargeable, for under $15, since that's what a very cheap one seems to go for. And I did it. I actually managed to do this for a little less than eleven dollars. Now, take a look at it. The components I used were the Tiger Power Tour, a USB Bluetooth audio stick with 3.5 millimeter extension cable, a USB micro power cable charger, two cell phone battery power packs where you put ordinary laptop 18650 cells into them and supposedly can charge up to one amp and discharge at one amp uh, found out that's actually a lie but for less than 75 cents each it wasn't too bad of a deal I used a few other components. Here is one of the chart cells I used, the 18650. These are very common in laptop battery packs. Uh, they are switching up to newer packs, use the flat ones, but a lot of the older packs use these. Uh, some switches. I used this square switch, but if I had to do it again, I would have used a round switch. It's just easier to drill a round hole using a bit. A 5.5 millimeter female jack which this USB cord can plug into now this was the originally the cell that this charger discharging board that charged and discharged this cell unfortunately it was very lacking uh, so I ended up using this 4056 TP lithium ion char protection uh, charger discharger. Um, it allow you to charge the battery up and discharge the battery, protecting it from dropping too low of a current. And I use this DC to DC USB burst boost converter. Uh, 0.9 volts to 5 volts, and it outputs 5 volts constantly up to one amp and it does a pretty good job of this here is a Scotchy diode uh, since I actually had two charging systems I didn't want them to cross so I used this to separate them uh, some glue of course the barrel plug to USB jack uh, various other bits of wire soldering and heat shrink all in all, this came to under $11 in parts purchased. Uh, I'm excluding the battery pack on the account that I use it for a lot more than just this system because I use it for my own phones, tablets, and other. Now, let's start with the back. Since that wasn't actually secured, it popped right off. You'll see right here. These have been hot glued in. I removed the charging discharger because, well, they ended up being pretty much useless for my task. Um, but I soldered them together and and glued them in so I can actually expand them. Uh, each battery provides about two hours to two and a half hours run time. So two batteries would run four to five hours. And mind you, this is assuming I'm at maximum volume for the entire duration. If I'm actually at half volume, it will use a bit less power. Uh, on the bottom here, you'll see here is the charging module, the 4056. There's a switch. And here's a barrel plug. Now, if I plug this in here, if I can get it 
Okay. I use some hot glue and I did that for a very specific reason. I wanted it so you could see the charging line. This will actually turn blue when this cell is completely charged. By flipping the switch on, I actually activate this power circuit and you'll see this light up. This light is actually this module right here powering up. Once that's on, you can turn this on and power it through the pack here. Now the alternate method of charging this up would be use the power pack and the barrel plug. Originally I wanted to use a micro USB, but I couldn't find any of the female joints laying around. Um, I thought about harvesting a joint from one of the from these, but I ended up just buying a set online for about 10 cents each. They'll probably arrive in two weeks. I may add them in later. But by doing this, I can charge it externally. And there's its resetting because I'll just switch the power supply. Now this pack here gives would power it for over 26 hours. I believe I tapped it calculated it at 26 and a half hours. And they're actually because of the scotchy dialic here, there's no real harm in actually using both of them at the same time. Um, because the scotchy doid doiled has a slight voltage drop. It drops it from 5.2 volts down to 4.8 volts. Uh, and this does not have a voltage drop because there is no diode in the way. It draws about 80% of the power from here and 20% from the pack. And I didn't really see any problem with having it both on at the same time. I just don't see a reason to have them both on at the same time. Uh, especially since we're dealing with two different voltages. I could end up wearing out the Bluetooth module sooner. Now, let's open it up. This originally actually had a lot of screws. I believe there's six in the back and four in the front. Really only need the four in the front. We'll start off here. It's a bit hard to see, but I took the audio cable here and soldered it to the input number two that's in the front. I soldered it directly to the audio jack and I swung it around to plug it into the Bluetooth module. Also, you notice I replaced the power cables. Uh, but this had some C sized batteries in there that were in there for quite a while and they corroded quite a bit of the wire, so I just removed the wire completely and put in some new wiring. As you'll see here, this is where the battery input comes in. And it immediately goes to this module here. The module then sp splits the protected off into the USB port. Which I attempted to solder directly to these little connectors on the back, but that ended up poorly for me. So I just used a broken USB module and cut off this here and connected it in. It might be a bit hard to see since I glued it into place right here. Here's where the Scotchy diode is, if I'm, I hope I'm pronouncing that right. Uh, this separates the battery part of the unit 
from the barrel jack part of the unit. Now, I didn't really want to destroy the Bluetooth module too much. Uh, honestly, I'm not 100% happy with the audio it provides. It's slight staticky, um, especially if you get too far away. I am looking into a better Bluetooth module, uh, but this was a cheap one dollar and I think I paid one dollar and fifty cents for it off eBay. Uh, but I just put a USB connector here and plugged the module in. Uh, barely hear you can't really hear the static when there's um, music playing, but if there's any sort of long silence you can hear it. Uh, back here is audio out, so if you actually wanted to plug this into another source, uh, say a better audio system and better speakers, you can do that as well. Flipping that around. Here's the speaker system, the LEDs that you saw light up. I didn't do any sort of modification with the speakers, so they're original speakers. Um, the only modification I did really here of note would have been audio jack and the power cord. Now, see if I slide that all back in here. I do have plenty of space actually in this module if I wanted to put more battery cells in here. Uh, but then I'd actually have to be opening this up every time I wanted to swap out the cells. So I decided to use cells in the back. I would simply use them until they're no longer viable. And then I'll swap them out with a new pair of cells. Overall, I'm pretty happy with it. I spent about uh, six or so hours. Mind you, I started and stopped a lot. Did things like solder extra joints. Uh, the biggest thing was waiting for the glue to dry. I'm going to pop that extra cell in. These are used cells, so I actually tested their capacity. And they're both, this was 1260, 1260 milliamps, and this is 1250 milliamps. So they're very close. Uh, since they don't have individual charging circuits, you have to keep them as close as possible if you want to keep your cells with long life. Thank you for watching this video, please subscribe for future updates.